to Tangential Diatribe, a podcast for two lads to talk about literature and current affairs and other things that pique our interest and typically go off topic on those topics. This week, we're taking a look at fantasy literature, the works of Mark Lawrence, KJ Parker, and most importantly, our pet peeves. And of course, Leif is going to hilariously mispronounce a name. Huh? I'm Ronan V, and with me, as always, is follically challenged man about town, husband, father, general know-it-all, Leif Shore. Leif, how are you? I'm fine. I'm, I'm deeply offended about follicle challenged. What? You're bald. Have you right? seen my beautiful, lush, very short hair? Hey, actually, it is growing a wee bit. Yeah. You're bald, though, right? No. Why do you shave your head? Because I look ridiculous with hair. I can see that. I yeah. can see that. Mind you, you have quite elven ears. Yes, that I like. <laughs> do you? Yeah, it should be a bit more pointy, though. Yeah, okay, okay. That's why I said elven like and not elven. <laughs> anyway, um, where we look at different topics in the fantasy genre, books that are coming out, classic books, topics that pique our interest, what we've been reading, why we got into fantasy, and basically anything fantasy, occasionally sci-fi related, although they are different genres, and nothing annoys me more than going into a bookstore or a library and seeing sci-fi and fantasy books are there, because they're not the same thing. Am I wrong? Ish? In what sense, ish? All right, so you have the portal genre, right? Mm -hmm. I cannot, for the life of me, figure out if that is fantasy or sci-fi because it's both. Well, it depends if you're portaled to a fantasy setting or a sci-fi setting. Okay, okay. So then you have end of the... Because one's magic. Or it depends on what the portal is. If it's a magic-based portal, then it's fantasy. If it's a science science-based portal yeah, yeah, sci-fi yeah. but then you have dystopian society collapsed and then they built a fantasy world on top of it yeah then that's fantasy no it depends how they have society afterwards and stuff if they got lasers that's sci-fi if they've got swords it's hey, fantasy dragons have lasers what <laughs> <laughs> all right. basically all right you could have got me with um a dystopian future where they've scientifically bred dragons mm -hmm. i.e. bloody Anne McCaffrey dragons of Pern I guess yeah um, so far in the future it blurs the lines a little bit some of the Dungeons and Dragons dragons have the crystal version they have basically lasers yeah but that's through crystals yeah it's still. different right yeah it, it depends if it's science based uh -huh. or fantasy based or magic based dragons magic-based. not science sorry dragons are clearly science based well, it depends, again, are they magic-based or a dragon's parent, which, again, <laughs> I'll admit, they've been bred so from point tiny little new. lizards. There is both of everything. There's no there set is. rules. You could go uh, your man Silverbird, mm -hmm. who, you know Silverbird? Maybe. Uh, Masher Poor and all that. Jazz were basically millennia ago. Um, humanity went out, colonized planets, and then planets got cut off. And oh, now yeah. they're in isolation, so you have yeah. different species and whatever on the same planet or whatever. Sci-fi. It's fantasy, though. On the planet, it's it's fantasy because it's all magic-based. Yeah. But it came from a sci-fi setting. So now you see the thing? You No, because that's all a fantasy point. book. Like, no, if they'd all gone there, been cut off, and it was a sci-fi setting. So the crux of it is good books are good books? Yes? Well, no, that's not the crux of it. The crux of it is <laughs> there's a market difference between... Fantasy and sci-fi. Yeah, well, I confuse it though. Just read what's good. Anyway, this is good. Uh, we've gone <laughs> completely off topic, right off the. How did you manage to do that? that? I don't know. I, I I just think there's a fundamental difference between fantasy and sci-fi. Anyway, Leif, uh, what have you been reading recently? I've been reading <laughs> Mark Lawrence's uh, latest trilogy, Ugh. or I think it's four books. It's, yeah, yeah, it's four books. Uh, it started out with the Red Sister. Book of Ancestors is the series called, and uh, I really like the first couple of books. It's it's they're, they're all based in the same world, right? Yeah, but I don't feel it as much. But they they are like they're all characters, like the latest ones are characters from the books, yeah, previous books. Maybe. I read them so long ago, oh, the okay, first okay. ones. So yeah, I also read the I only read the first three of his thing oh. with the prince. Yeah, and then I skipped Prince of Bastards. No, yeah, is Prince it? of Thorns. Prince of Thorns. Yeah. It. 
the Broken Empire series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I read uh, those first three. Kind of yeah. liked them, but not overly yeah. much. Not enough to read the next three. Yeah. Uh, but then I got interested in the Red Sister one because a friend of mine recommended it. Okay. And I said, okay, let's try it. And I yeah. really liked those, the beginning of those. It was really nice. Uh, and I just finished the last one and didn't like it at all. Yeah. And that's a common problem, isn't it? It A little bit. Um, I read the first three, mm -hmm. um, thought they were fine. I had my issues and I think we'll get into that later. Yeah. Um, I then read the next two which is a different series but uh, I can't remember the name of the protagonist from the first three yeah. but he makes a cameo in why would you want him in like, I, he, that, he, he was the worst part of those books there, there's literally <laughs> a scene where he walks into a bar yeah. and the second trilogy I can't even remember it's a trilogy mm. but the second lot of books uh, deals with a coward a yeah exactly coward. they are opposite yeah. yeah so they kind of meet in a bar and He's talking about bravado, but he makes a cameo, so they're linked. Yeah, but that, I could understand that. I kind of yeah. like that. So you have the 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 super aggressive one, and then you have the coward one. Mm. So that makes sense, yeah. right? But he, he's a coward prince, so he, people think he's brave because yeah. he talks a good game. Okay. And then he sees this kid mm. who's the prince of thorns, yeah. who is just a child, yeah. but he's a dangerous, dangerous man. He <laughs> sees him and he goes, oh, "I'll kick this kid out because he's causing a bit of trouble." Mm. He walks over classic they stare at each other and he goes no he's not worth it and he walks off so he recognizes why are you spoiling the books i haven't read it, it's it's literally <laughs> a very small vignette <laughs> it has no bearing on the story no bearing why would you do that to me it, it has no bearing I on thought the we were friends it's a small <laughs> vignette anyway tell me about the all right trilogy. so the the what, what books are in the trilogy all right so book of the ancestors is Red Sister, Grey Sister, and Holy Sister. Okay. And who are the sisters? It's a monastery. Okay. Is it similar to the monks, like the band of brothers from the first trilogy? Because they were monks. Is it similar to that? Maybe. Because they were, they were a band of brothers. Like yeah. that was his gang. Yeah. And they were quasi monks. I don't remember. I read all of them, but it's yeah. like 10 years ago. So Anyway, that's that's what they were. So uh, is it, are there parallels? Uh... This is a convent of sweet mercy for young girls raised to be killers and right. they used to be um, so they become a power of course okay. in their own end and they play a power game in politics okay. that some of the nuns do and that's how it plays out and it's following different sisters in that okay. convent and that's why I assumed it was a little bit on the side not yeah. connected to the world as such but okay. yeah it is later on in later books it is a bit and my main it's still worth reading. I do like the pace of those three books. Yeah. But as always, when it comes to trilogies, in the end, you have to tie up all the loose ends and the people that do it have too many powers and things feels weird. Yeah. And I don't know how... It's hard to sometimes point at the thing that makes a book really good and the other book mm. not at all. But that was happened. So the first two books I liked a lot. Yeah. And the third book I'm like, eh, not mm. into it. Can we, can we just uh, talk about the world? So yeah. it's a dystopian future. Like it's Europe after a fall. Yeah, but I don't feel that. I know, but that, that's what it is. That, that's so, the yeah, same. yeah, I know, I know. Here it's, it's after uh, a fall, the world's broken. Here, no, here it's... Uh, um, ship parts. Yeah. That's, this is basically a... Uh, uh, space faring yeah thing and they yeah uh, that's that's the thing or I don't know and then they have this controller units for those ships and it's like yeah it's way out like <laughs> so are you saying yeah to my expression which is one of incredulity confusion yeah it's still fantasy but it, this is what it does so all, all the other books were also past like they have old civilization that left powers they it, have it, this it's engines. after the fall of the world yeah and this is kind of the same it's set in Europe after the fall of the world. Yeah, but this is not... I don't think... We can same. spoil the first three books because it's been 10, 15 years. No, you should not spoil books for anybody. Okay, I won't. Ever. But <laughs> there's... It, it's that classic trope of there are things left over from mm. the ancients mm. that helps them. So exactly, you, you same know. here. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. But not good? What do you mean? Like the books, they're not good? The first books were. So it depends on your preference, right? Yeah. I prefer books where 
the, you can follow the protagonist the protagonist gets powers uh, or evolves yeah and you follow that coming of age story yeah and after a while that's not as interesting because they already have all the powers sure and this happens in these books too and that's why I kind of always lose interest at the end of the book. Is there a main protagonist through the three books? Yeah. Okay. Who's that? It's a girl called. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Cra- Nona Gray. Cracking review. I know. <laughs> hey, I barely remember your name. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> Nona Gray, and you follow her. Mm-hmm. And her mates, basically. Is she an anti-hero? Because that's Mark Lawrence's thing, isn't it? Yeah. The hero's an anti-hero. Yeah. He's not a good She's, uh... Well, at the same time, though. Okay, she's an anti-hero, and she comes with... Oh, no, she's the weakling, and she doesn't have this, and she doesn't have that. Okay. But all of a sudden, she finishes all the trials and whatever. So... They don't have the powers, but they always ace things. Right. So, I don't know. What are the books about? I'm not getting a good feel for this. No. Like, what are the books about? What happens? Then I will spoil it. You don't need to spoil it. You can just <laughs> give me the main blurb. Like, okay. give me the elevator pitch for this book. Um. Okay, I'm sold on this already. Yeah, no. Got me on tenterhooks. Yeah, damn <laughs> pa pa pa. So like, uh, what what's the actual story about? Like, right. Take me from begin to end right. without any spoilers. What happens? Right. What's going on? It begins with a tiny eight year old girl who get into trouble and end up at the convent. Classic. Yeah. And unless the convent's gonna sell her to the warlord that wants her dead, she have to join the convent. Okay. That's what she does. And who are the convent? The convent is a martial sisterhood that trained killers. Of course they are. Yeah, of course they are. Yeah. And they have three different paths where it's a uh, sword, stealth, uh, other things. Good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, uh, it's about her journey inside that convent and then outside the convent. And then as... Uh, she have to you follow her until she's a grown woman basically okay okay so and that's the three books what, what's the big evil the big evil is uh, politics outside the convent okay okay and uh, how to deal with the people who want to kill her of course naturally naturally it, does she turn out to be somebody important yes yeah of course ish okay. yeah ish okay yeah. okay let, let me ask you this question. Now, this question we always ask: uh, Would you recommend this series to me? To you, maybe not. Okay. To other people, yes. Okay. Why not? Is it based on previous conversations about Mark Lawrence and his books? Yeah, probably. Okay. <laughs> so uh, the books are good. The, yeah. Uh, and he writes the same way. Yeah. I actually think this writing is better than his previous books. Yeah. Okay. Um, He's a good writer. Yeah. That's. Of course, he yeah. is. otherwise he wouldn't have sold as many books as he yeah. did. But uh, uh, I think his worlds are terrible. Yes, his world I don't like it either. Yeah, and uh, and uh, it's not it's not sci-fi, but it's still sci-fi and it's still fantasy. Yeah, mainly fantasy, but still sci-fi influenced. And yeah. those things pulls me out of the world. I'm not there to read that. I'd rather have pure sci-fi book yeah. or pure fantasy book sure sure I don't like when it's too mingled because it makes the mental loops harder yeah yeah and okay. uh, all his books have some kind of sci-fi element okay because of the world building yeah sure the, the ancients and yeah. whatever yeah yeah whatever lots remnant technology whatever okay I can I can I tell you my biggest bugbear with Mark Lawrence mm-hmm. um, I'll also I'll tell you my favorite thing first it's a uh, he has a wonderful uh, visceral way of writing. Yeah, like you, you can imagine this. There's a in his first trilogy. There's a point where um, they have to interrogate a guy, mm. and the wee kid who I think he's like 14. Yeah, but he, he's a big killer. You yeah. know, he's whatever. Um, he's tw- he has to interrogate this guy, 
and he just walks up to him and he talks about driving nails mm. into his head. I don't know if you remember the scene. Maybe. It, but it's fantastically written and mm. I believe it and I'm like, yeah, that would scare the shit out of you. I mean, you tell anything, that's really good torture. Mm. His maps. Yeah. Don't make sense. I, I traveling from A to B in his world, I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it and, and it's a real problem with me because mm. you do you, you know you can write really well and you got a good flow but you follow characters yeah from A to B the miles that they travel of course however you do it you follow they them. all do those kind of uh, this leg of journey took two days and this leg of yeah. journey took 20 days sure and it's just writing tricks right yeah yeah but his don't make sense okay. his, his places don't make sense in relation mm. to each other they never have for me I uh, kind of agree. Under the mountain thing was really confusing yeah. to me. It Under was... the mountain in the first book when they were having to get to the yeah, top. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I know what you mean. Yeah, it's just that that's my biggest bugbear with him, mm. and it drew me out enough that after the second trilogy, or I'm pretty sure it was just two books in the mm. second one, but I was out. For me, it was like this. I like Grimdark. It's yeah. We both love Grimdark. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it makes real. it more real. Makes yeah. it better in my yeah. opinion because. People can be grimdark. Yeah, but don't don't overdo it. Yes. Yeah. He has a tendency to almost overdo it. Yeah. Also, um, the and then if the map doesn't make sense, the world doesn't make sense. Mm. Compare and also add on top of that the grimdarking being a bit too much sometimes. Mm. Uh, that's why I didn't continue after the first three mm. books. But um, I gave him a second chance. Enjoyed the ride, mm. hated the ending. Okay, let me ask you this. And that's probably w- without this giving exactly, spoilers. Wait, wait, and yeah. that's exactly the same thing that happened with the first three books. I, I was just about to ask. Yeah. Um, there, there's this arc. Like, if you have an anti-hero, yeah, there's got to be redemption at some stage. Where, Why? Because okay, yeah. there does. Like yeah. in the first trilogy, I think we can spoil things because mm. it's been too long. I'm pretty Don't sure. Don't spoil things. If the first three books, <laughs> pre- no, right? no. But generally with films it's two weeks and then you can spoil shit because if they haven't watched it that's on them with books like five ten years come on I gotta yeah, be able to spoil that shit so no maybe this is the spoiler warning <laughs> me going uh, don't spoil it and you go yeah, I will spoil it <laughs> me battering against exactly. your no spoiling one so go. Right. okay there's a spoiler in effect yeah um it's it's not really a spoiler. The protagonist from the first three books is like a fourteen year old boy, he's a yeah. massive killer. Um he's an anti hero. But there's no redemption for him. Like he's still what he is at the beginning. Like his arc isn't that big. No, yeah. Like his he, he doesn't even have an arc. He is he, like he's a killer. Yeah. That's... Whatever. And there's rationale behind it, you know, mm. his parents or whatever are thrown into the briar patch. Mm. All of this is dad's a killer or whatever you can see how he became that yeah. but there's no redemption for him okay yeah. like he's still a remorseless killer hmm. at the end yeah and that's what he is at the beginning okay there's a there's a good there's a good book uh, David Gemmel one of yeah. my favorite authors <laughs> his book uh, Morning Star yeah. where in it, it and the, it, perfect you know there's a rogue who doesn't care about anything mm. you know sleeps with women you know breaks up marriages whatever but he has redemption towards okay. the end you know where he becomes the hero yeah, but that, that people thought he was. Death. Yeah, yeah. There's got to be some redemption, and Mark okay. Lawrence doesn't have that. And it's grim, dark, and I understand mm. that. But even David Aber- uh, 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 Joe Abercrombie, yeah, who I, I think is the master of grim, dark right yes, now. I would say so. Yeah, his characters yeah. have redemption. Okay, are moments where you go, okay, they're not mm. just that. No, they're not. Yeah. Not all bad. They have yeah. other sides too, of course. But that's isn't that key to all? Yeah, Grimdark. I don't think Mark Lawrence has that. Maybe not. Like the, the, the remorseless killer. Mm. There's there might be a rationale for it, but the remorseless killer. Yeah. You know. Okay. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. But Would you recommend it? Not as much as Joe Abercrombie. Here we go. Would you recommend it to me? No. Would you recommend it to Joe on the street? Yes. Joe or Susan on the street. If you read most things, need a new fantasy series, sure. Mm. Why not? But would you start here with Mark Lawrence or would you go back to the beginning? Uh, Bearing in mind that you might not reach these three. Yeah. I don't know. So for me, I know what I got. I I, I basically went in expecting to not like it. Mm. 
and then I got surprised and came to the ending, mm. right? Would you go back and read the two that you missed? Maybe actually. Really? Because okay. um, um, if the first two are good, yeah, then then I'll maybe skip the third. <laughs> <laughs> like this, yeah. like he's been consistent with his other series. Sure. Then sure, why not? Okay, okay. Because I'm kind of running out of books that I want to read. Yeah. And that's weird when it's so many books being produced. So what have you been reading? Um, interesting enough, um, I've come back and reread a series. I'm halfway through it. Uh, the Two of Swords by K.J. Parker. Okay. Um, it's a serialization uh, based in, I'm pretty sure all his books are based in the same world. Um, loosely connected. Mm. I, I'm pretty sure I read that somewhere. It might not be true, but they all read very similar um it, it, it it's very interesting there's it's so hard to talk about the serialization of books without giving away heavy spoilers because the ending is what's very the, integral to what's the name of the books uh it's called the two of swords um it's it, it begins mm. as basically uh the story of the belot brothers who okay. are two generals in the East and Western Empire. Oh, okay. They hate each other. and That's a good premise, though. It, it is, because they're supreme generals. Mm. The only person they could lose against is their brother. Okay. Nobody else could beat them. Okay. And while they're both alive, it's a stalemate. But you learn that there's a reason for the stalemate and the mm. reason why the war keeps going on. Okay. But I can't go into it more. And there's also another... Uh, player on the game called the Craftsman and basically it's a quasi-religious order okay. where they collect specialist people. So you could be the best liar in the world, okay. they want you. You mm. could be the best bowman in the world, they want you. Okay. You could be the biggest rogue in the world, they want you for their collection. You're definitely selling the books better than I did. Well, I want to read this now. It, 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 fantastic books and when, when I first read it, like if you buy the whole thing mm. as one, it's fantastic because it jumps. There's no central character in it. Okay. There's a central premise which you only learn around about book seven or eight. Mm -hmm. um, for the first five books, you kind of have an inkling of what's going on. Uh, so it's like the uh, uh, the Mel Hassan series. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Erickson. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They're all like independent, but not. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So there's threads within threads. A lot of the time, characters are being described, and you've got to think back on other books. Mm. Um, each book's only like 60 pages like long. Yeah. 60 pages long. So you can read them. Oh, okay. It's like two chapters in each. Mm. But they follow a single thread. They all relate together. And at the time, you know, they were, uh, I think, like, uh, what should we use? Like, we're, we both live in Sweden. But I appreciate that people probably won't get Krona. So okay. I use Euros. Yeah. Which I think people are, it's a little bit easier. So they were all like three Krona each. Okay. That's I'm sorry, three Euros each. Yeah. Um, which isn't much, yeah. but when there's 19 books, yeah, it adds up. Yeah, it adds up, and you don't realize it. And that's uh, we're going to get into why the, it annoys me a little bit. Mm. Um, it's fantastic, really, really good. Are they it, all finished? Yeah, it's done. It, okay. It's been done for a long time. So you can buy uh, you the can, whole thing. You, can, I think you can buy them in three lots. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah. that's perfect. So I'm, it's like a normal trilogy. Then. Yeah, and it, it's great. It's fantastically written. The characters are all fantastic to the point where. Each character doesn't get enough playtime because mm -hmm. like, characters will come in and then disappear. Okay. And you'll hear about them in the periphery through other characters, mm. but you're like, I, I, I kind of want to know More what they're this. going on. Yeah. And I, I think it's one of the best things he's ever done. And I've always been a huge fan of KJ Parker, mm -hmm. except for serialization. Yeah. But uh, is that a, a, a side problem due to online release? Like do the Kindle store and stuff. Like that? I, it could be. I think it's. Um, I I can see why authors do it because mm. essentially you're writing a short story each time, and obviously that, that must be easier in some ways than writing a full book and mm. having to publish it, and you probably make more money. Yeah, maybe if you and, get enough traction. Right? Yeah, I think it's a money thing. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. Um, we're gonna get into later why it annoys me in this particular instance and but why I went back and well wrote this. known so that he should be picked up, right? KJ Parker's a weird one. Um, I, I'm a massive fan. I've read everything. Mm. When I've spoken to other people who read fantasy, he doesn't seem to be as well known. No. I bought one trilogy of his. Yeah. And uh, that was only because I was like reaching for things that I sure. haven't read. 
and uh, oh, let's try this thing. Yeah. And I happened to pick a bad one. <laughs> so I don't, if that would have been a good one, yeah. I, would read, I would have read everything he made. That, that's the first series, though. It is. And yeah, you. I think mm. you picked the first series that he did. Uh, KJ Parker is a pseudonym of Tom Holt, okay. who's known for. Um, if you think Terry Pratchett, yeah. Tom Holt is that. Okay. Um, not as good because mm-hmm. it could be as good as Terry Pratchett yeah. in that genre. I think Terry Pratchett literally invented the genre that Terry Pratchett's in. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah I, I think so. There's but a couple of comedic ones before, but it's not that yeah. huge. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I perfected yeah. it at least. Put it on the map. Yeah. Um, but Tom Holt is that. Mm-hmm. But KJ Parker is fantastic. Every book he writes is basically the same thing, which is, I feel, is what if a psychotic person mm-hmm. tried to do good, uh, but it didn't go well? Okay, yeah. And everybody misconstrued the good acts that the psychotic person was doing. Yeah, yeah. And I say psychotic. Isn't humanity like that? Um, perhaps, possibly. Yeah. I say psychotic, but I always get I always get psychotic and sociopathic mixed up. Yeah. So all good leaders are sociopathic. It's the same. Psychopathic. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Psychopathic. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, I can't remember which one is the one that understands empathy, mm. but doesn't feel it, and the one that understands empathy but doesn't care. Okay. Yeah. And uh, anyway, but. Yeah. That's essentially what they are. It's about somebody trying to do good, mm. but it, it, it's almost it, it's akin to what if an AI decided what would be right for humanity? Yeah, it won't go well, yeah. but it's the kill trial. a thousand to save a million. Yeah, it's exactly. that kind of logic, yeah. and that runs through his in all his books. It's Makes somebody sense. trying to do good, but good in the sense of I, I, I can dispose of a battalion of soldiers because it's going to save my entire army. But that is true to all. No, history. it is, but it's it's. You get that, but that's generally not the hero. No, of course not. It's not because well, the hero would have saved the battalion and the army. Our, is Caesar a hero? Of, of his own memoirs, 100% yeah. he is, yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Mm. In that sense, like traditional fantasy heroes are not people who would go, uh, I'm going to sacrifice a thousand men to save a hundred thousand. No, of course not. Like in history, yeah. you know, Alexander the Great, yeah, Caesar, yeah. they all did it. But in fantasy, the hero would not do that. That's why I like Grimdark, because heroes yeah. makes no sense if they don't do that. Yeah, yeah. But he, uh, KJ Parker takes it to the nth degree. Okay. It, right. It's always about that. It's always about the greater good, but mm. that being misconstrued. Mm. And people... Like, he does a really good one called The Folding Knife. Yeah. Where that is amazingly well done. I won't spoil it, because it, it's a fantastic book. Mm-hmm. In the sense that... And his heroes are always... Um, you know, I threw out that book. You sh- yeah, I, I think I reread it because you gave it to me because you yeah. threw it out. But have you read it? No. You didn't even read it? No. It, it's probably his best. I didn't have room. I need to move. And it, his heroes are always engineers okay. or accountants Perfect. or politicians. They're never... I need to read more of his stuff. You do because they're fantastic and nice. they read really well. Okay. Um. Anyway, yeah, that, that's it. Sorry, I went and read this. We're going to mm. get into why I read it mm. in our topics section. Okay. But... Great books, and that's what I'm reading right now. I'm about halfway through. I've read it, I think, twice before. Fantastic, fantastic. Nice. Yeah. Would you recommend it? To you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Other people? 100%, yeah. I, I think he, I think oh, well. he's underread. I think he's underread. And if you want something in fantasy that's slightly off-kilter, mm-hmm. like not... Why didn't the world grab me when I tried to read his first book then? It, it's not as good. I think the fundamental problem is if you've got somebody... His first book, as far as the, I can't remember, I think it's, I think it's, it's like called mem- Memory or it's something. It's the Shadow... Raven Shadows of Memory, yeah. yeah. Um, I think the fundamental problem with it is your main protagonist has no memory. Yeah, maybe that was... And so he, he has no depth. Yeah. And you're following this person with no depth. Yeah, and understandably, and if you don't go through yeah, the loops. Then, yeah, yeah, and I think that was the problem. And it, it, when you read everything KJ Parker has written, yeah, you realize that that book mm. was uh, Tim Holt mm. or Tom Holt, I can't remember, and um, finding his feet. Okay, and as KJ Parker, comes. and after that he goes because okay. I think the Engineer trilogy comes after that. Okay, yeah, and that's fantastic. Okay. And you would love. Could that. I start with the Engineer trilogy? Um, would I miss something? Something? Not at all. Like as I say, they're all set in the same world, and I am pretty sure I read that somewhere. Mm. Like he, he said it in an interview, mm. but they're all not connected. Okay. Like occasionally you'll hear of a country mm. that is associated, or he, he loves. It kind of makes sense yeah. with writers to do that, right? Yeah. So. He loves his uh, um, 
tribal barbarians yeah. in the distance who are a threat but never really impact. I never liked that though. It works. Okay. And they do in other books. So right. read it. Uh, KJ Parker, great. I will do. I'm going to tell you in a couple of minutes why you shouldn't read KJ Parker <laughs> and why he's annoyed me and I'm maybe out. But so, anyway, uh, uh, that's it. Have you been reading anything else? Yeah. What uh, about off fantasy? Off fantasy, I've read. Um, I can't even pronounce this guy. This is the weirdest name ever. Okay, so it's Paolo. That's yeah. easy, right? Mm-hmm. Baclia Klupli. <laughs> is there any chance you could spell that? Uh, B A C I G L L U U P I. Okay. You Good. see, that's kind of hard to pronounce. I'm gonna give this a go. Holy shit! Yeah. That's a weird name. <laughs> it's a weird name. I'm sorry, Paolo Bacigalupi. Yeah, that's it's Italian, sounded, I guess. I don't know, but it sounded way better than what I did. All right, so this is the author who made uh, a very famous book called uh, No. Yeah, called No. No, or? called The Wind Up Girl. The Wind Up Girl. Yeah, and that is a. I feel like I've heard of that. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty famous book. Uh, got highly rated the year it came out. Yeah, and it's about um, uh, the, the world has gone to shit. Mm. People don't live in. They live in flooded cities. Okay. And they have problems feeding themselves. So there's like uh, engineered foods and new foods and okay. stuff like that. And it's about that world. Yeah. And uh, I think Shipbreaker is kind of in a similar theme. It's basically end of days, world's gone to shit, and on a coastal site somewhere the in the middle of nowhere. The world's gone to shit, hasn't it? Yeah, I know. It's Jesus. almost like we're meant to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, there's a, a little village of Shipbreakers who um, try to scavenge things, basically. Okay. And it's about those people there. That's kind of interesting. I'm intrigued. Okay. I the, So the... Um, the writer is really good at feeling the tension of uh, climate change and okay. making stories around the predictions or worst case scenarios. Are they smacking you around the head with the climate change thing? Not at all. Okay, it's basically good. you're put into it and yeah. this is how we would yeah. try to solve the problems that we face yeah. in our day to day sense. That's why they're popular I think. Okay. And uh, I definitely would recommend them. The writing is good, the characters are good. Um, and the world building is good. Excellent. And who was it by? I can't pronounce the guy. You did that on purpose, you <laughs> bastard. Yeah. Paolo Baclialupi. Yeah. Close enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, sorry, Paolo Bacca, whatever. Yes, search uh, for the Wind Up Girl. Yeah. It's the most famous book, and it's uh, the good, really good. Good. This is. Have you been reading anything else? Um, I haven't, mate. Um. I we were talking about this before. I I got a bit of a brain drain. I went through a couple of months of reading too much to the point where it all blurred. Um, so so you read nothing. But I you read <laughs> just literally KJ Parker. I'm reading the KJ Parker Two of Swords. Yep. I'm reading the original trilogy, mm-hmm. like we talked about, and I am reading something else on the Kindle. And for the life of me, I can't remember the name of it. Why are you reading several series at the same time? Because um, the KJ Parker Two of Swords, because I've read it before and it's a serialization. Yeah. So you can read a little bit, to take, take a, break, a break, read again. Okay. Yeah. Um, the original trilogy, because you gave me the books. Yep. And it's a it's a hard. Threw book. them out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I regret it. Maybe. I took them from the bin. <laughs> um, they it, it it's a hard like it's an actual book and when you get on the kindles and things yeah it's weird going back to your book yeah, yeah. you gotta take that with you and stuff yeah i know and carry it yeah and actually a, flip a page it's, it's weird. weird so i'm doing that and that and then on the kindle mm. i have another like it's the start of a trilogy and for the life of me i cannot remember what it's it called be really good it is not good okay it is not good i'm not enjoying it but I'm, the f- I'm, I'm probably 10 pages from the end of the first book. Okay. And I'm just booting it off because I know once I finish those 10 pages, i got to read the next one. You don't have to. I, I do. And I'm not enjoying it. I get, maybe next week I'll tell you, you what the book is. If you don't enjoy moments, the perfect place to stop reading them is at the end of the first book. I know, but I'm a completionist. I, uh, I, I need you have OCD, you mean? It's not OCD, man. I, it's just I, I want to 
finish it. Otherwise, yeah. so if I put a, a Harlequin novel in front of you, with like, uh, what's a, what's a Harlequin novel? Harlequin novel is a cheap paperback romance story with filthy, not filthy. Uh, what's it called? Um, uh, vivid sex scenes. I'd be all over that, buddy. I know you would. Yeah. And you would just like I don't know. It's uh, books made for I don't know Pre- like adolescent El- students. No, no, old uh, housewives. Wow. Want to relive the spark of the pink fluffy cloud <laughs> of sex and excitement. Okay. Good. You've read a lot of these, though, haven't you? None. I'm sure you've read Harlequin books. Never. You've but I have a lot of friends who ah, read them. Ah, there it is. So uh, I used to have. Um, uh, lady friends who love them and yeah. like go through them like I go through fancy books. Yeah. That's why it's interesting. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I just I, I the demographics of those books are like stay at home moms that are forty plus. Okay, so yeah. Um, anyway, uh, there's nothing wrong with a Jackie Collins. Hey, I've read Jackie Collins. Yeah, she's ain't, good. Ain't nothing wrong with Jackie Collins. No. Um, I can't remember what the book is, man. It's on my uh, Kindle. I could literally look it up, but. I, I wouldn't recommend it. I haven't enjoyed it. Um, I'm not even going to look it up. All right, I, I've done. literally got my laptop yeah. beside me. Yeah. It would take me but five seconds to look it up. No, I don't. Instead, it's okay. I'm, I'm going to spend 20 seconds <laughs> saying I'm not going to look it up because right. it's just not good. So, I heard you had pet peeves. All right. Uh, so, we're going to transition smoothly. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a really good seg, but Leif just ruined it <laughs> with that, which is fine. So, we're going to... Our topic this week is pet peeves in the fantasy world. Mm-hmm. I have lots of pet peeves for a genre that I love. Yeah. Um, but that's key, uh, though. If yeah. you don't love it, you don't have pet peeves. Oh, yeah. You just be indifferent. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah. Uh, and since we clearly are passionate fantasy yeah. readers... Because if you go through the um, reading list, I probably read, I don't know, 500 fancy books. Is that enough? I, I, more? I, I couldn't even tell you how many. I probably read more. I have no idea. But I'd it's say, yeah. Way more because. You're old. Like, and yeah, we're old. Lot, I'm so 40 and you're about 40, I'm almost. I'm nowhere near 40. Yeah, close 40. It's nowhere near 40. 40 next week. Uh, Done. Outrageous. But uh, nowhere near 40. You look. 50 though but yeah I don't look 50 I look yeah, really young beard. for my age nah. and my age is nowhere near 40 alright close enough yeah so we spent a lot of years and even if you go conservatively yeah you will read let's say 12 books that's one book a month yeah which is ridiculous because I read like 4 or 8 books yeah. a month we, we estimated it and roughly on average mm. I've read 50 books a year yeah and it was the same with you I think yeah and it was more most years yeah so, but on average, fifty books a year, and that's and I started at twelve. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it, it it'll be more than it adds years. up. Yeah, it it does. You Quick. don't realize it'll add up. Yeah, and yeah. even if you have an off year or two, yeah. it's fine. Like, so we are, we are passionate about it. Is I think yeah. is what you're trying to say, and um, that creates crazy amounts of pet peeves. It does. Yeah. So what's one of your top pet peeves? My it's not one of it is my singular uh, top pet peeve uh-huh. in books. And we touched upon it earlier. It's maps not making sense. I can see how that ruins a book. It it really does. I, it do you know what? It doesn't ruin a book. Okay. Because uh, one of my favorite authors, Tom Lloyd, mm-hmm. um, his Ragged Man. Oh, you series. mean KJ Parker? Uh, that's Tom Holt. Ah, totally close enough. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> Tom Lloyd, uh, the Ragged New Man names. series. Um, Oh yeah, it it's similar to yeah. Mark Lawrence in a way yeah. that it is. Uh, well, no, it's not. No, it's not. That, that's an outright lie. <laughs> Fantastic series. Um, he's gone on to do other things, but his Ragged Man series, um, his map. There are times when the army or people move, mm-hmm. and the distances don't make sense. So okay, at one point I understand your complaint and mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. And another point, I feel that you're silly. I, I, I can see that it's it's akin to if you pick up a computer game yeah. and the map doesn't make sense yeah. on a, uh, a conscious level you, you don't really it doesn't matter no because you go whatever it, it, what it is on a subconscious level yeah. it irritates you yeah. and you can't understand why is this annoying me like 
you know, because it, it's a very subconscious thing, yeah. maps especially, and I think that is what it is in fantasy. Yeah. It's not like I'm actively going, oh, geez, well, that doesn't make sense. He's only traveled 12 leagues, but he's saying he's, he's, yeah. he's traveled 100 leagues. So well, that, that sounds like that. <laughs> that, that, that country is not exactly beside that. And to get from that capital to that capital, I know earlier he says 100 leagues, but it's only taken him a day. And I know you can only travel 10 leagues in a day. So that what's is going on? That is exactly what you're doing. But not on a conscious level. I know. It's a subconscious thing yeah. where I'm reading it and I'm going, it's, it's making me uncomfortable. Like, yeah. And then you, you begin to think of it and it takes you out of the book. I can agree. I have an example that annoys me. Yeah. And that's movies. Okay. So I've trained a little bit of my shots. Okay. And enough to know movements and yeah. how things and yeah. people move and weight classes and stuff like that. Mm. So whenever I watch a movie with an action sequence, yeah. and there's like a 40 pound girl beating 90 pound guys with fancy moves, I, it always annoys me. And I, I, they need to do it really well for me to accept it. I, I don't and it can destroy a movie for me. But that's, that's not the same as maps. It's, it's the same thing, because in your mind, that's you have a... Foo. Uh, that, that's that's what they named it. It's when Angelo, Angelina Jolie with her yeah, but zero it doesn't have to mass. be a girl. It could be a no, guy I'm, too. I'm just saying yeah, yeah. when she beats up like a 500 pound guy. Yeah, it's like you can have all the martial training in the world, but it ain't gonna happen. Yeah, or um, so if it's guy on guy. Yeah, that flashy fancy technique that he used is only to make it look good, but it's not effic- effective in the way that you think. I, th- I think that's different though. Yeah, yeah, no, but yeah. So sorry, uh, we moved beyond maps to your pet peeve. I no, I'm just adding to your, and I can totally see how a so my specifically point, maps. Yeah, no, no. So my point is this: once it gets into your head, yeah. the way you think about a thing, yeah, can destroy a thing. Yeah. So uh, another th- classic thing is um, studying film. Yeah. Ruins movies for you because you start to analyze the movie you're watching instead of just enjoying the ride. I don't think I don't think it is that. It's I think it's it's a fundamental flaw in your world building. The, the, yes, I, I think it's both. Essentially, okay, it's it's people it's people writing and not taking enough care. Yeah, you could say fundamentally that's what it is. Exactly. But I, I'm talking specifically map building. Okay. Okay, because yeah. every everything else. There's could, so many fancy maps that are bad though. But there are. But there are authors who um, David Gemmell again. Mm-hmm. Uh, God rest him. Um, famously, didn't have any maps. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of fans books will put a map in, so you can chart the progress. Famously, he didn't until a fan drew a map, and he went, "That's a good map," and he put it in later on, and it was good. But it, his his travels always made sense. All right. Like when you're reading, most people, I feel like, who make maps or fancy books, yeah, they kind of uh, uh, doesn't have topographic knowledge enough to yeah. build a realistic map yeah so they just make a generalist idea from their head well, of course that's not gonna yeah. make sense and it, I, I get that it's a problem yeah. like if you're talking about if you're talking about um, empires in your fantasy book yeah I, but you need a lot of action to happen you yeah. got to realize that if for an empire to happen on a fast horse you want, it takes a week to get from one end to the other you're like the only guy who looks at map more than a couple of times reading a book I, I love maps I know yeah. And that is your problem. It's not my problem. Yes, it is. It, it, if it you overanalyze the map. It, it's not. I, when I'm reading a book, yeah. um, I, I don't think about the map. But yeah. Mark Lawrence has this problem. Yes, uh, where it's, I agree. It's, it's the simple fact where to get from one land to the other, they've got to be 100 yards away. But he would have that problem if even if there were no map in the front page. It doesn't matter about his map. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I, I don't care if you got a map on the front. So page. is the world building making sense more? It, it's more about taking care and okay. going. Okay, uh, uh, A is in X, mm. um, but he needs to get to Y. Yeah. Um, and I know X is however many mm. leagues, or it's always leagues. I think from thing. My main pet peeve is kind of similar, mm. but not. What's your main pet peeve? My main pet peeve is uh, thief guilds in tiny villages. Okay. Okay. And. That makes sense if there's enough people. Yeah. But if there's not enough people, then everybody knows everybody. And you cannot have a thief guild unless they control the whole thing. So, yeah, why I draw the parallel is because the people who wrote the story yeah. maybe didn't think about city planning as much as they should. Yeah, okay. So, it's the... 
people creating worlds mm. not having enough info yeah when they create the worlds right yeah that's that's very true so and that's understandable because <laughs> they yeah. are busy writing a book they're not <laughs> actually reading sure. up on things topics they never mm. thought about before do you know two authors who dealt with that really well? Uh, Raymond E. Feist, mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy the Hand, his books. Um, he had that, because you know there's the Thieves yeah. Guild and he's famous for it. Uh, when Jimmy the Hand went to a small village yeah. and he, he was like, oh, I'll hook up with a Thieves Guild here and it turned out to be one person. Yeah. Because of course there isn't. Like, and then there's KJ Parker who we were just talking about it yeah. and you know how they collect people. Yeah. One of the main characters is a guy called Moosin mm. who's like a thief. Yeah. And like an amazing thief but an amazing liar. But he comes from a tiny village, and but uh, he has this convers great conversation where the guy's going like, it "Must have been hard." Uh, and he's like, "Why?" And he's like, "Well, you're a master thief in a village of a hundred. Yeah. You steal something, like, no, peep, you can't sell it. No." But then Musum was, uh, "Well, of course you can. You steal like a hoe, mm. um, you shave that hoe down, whatever. <laughs> uh, you got yourself a bloody bow staff or whatever. Mm -hmm. and you pan that off, or you steal something." couple of weeks later you bring it back to the person and go oh I found this yeah so there are ways around it but I couldn't agree more yeah and even in big cities yeah uh, since they're always kind of turned into districts yeah it's the same problem because you have a, a few amount like if you have a limited amount of people yeah and those people all know each other they see each other daily yeah. Uh, putting up a mask won't like, you will still recognize the person that's the thing yeah okay uh, and uh, so many authors disrespect that or not disrespect but that doesn't see that or doesn't mm. address that in some way if they do it's fine you can work around it as you said yeah but that's one of my main pet peeves fantasy genre with realistic sizes of villages yeah like you will get caught 100% of the time. Yeah. There is no warrants. The city has to be really old to have a uh, network underground. Yeah. Like, you can't have a... If you go to a village of 10 farmhouses, yeah. there's no s hidden layers. The sewer there's, system. Yeah, no. Yeah. Like, the sewer system is there. And if it's there, it's full of shit. Nothing <laughs> else. <laughs> and there's no room to make yeah. a layer. Like, it's... Yeah. You have to make it semi-plausible in okay. my mind. So, you can lump ours together which is yeah. pro, -world, pro world building exactly peppy oh my god i think like you yeah what <laughs> here's is something that annoys me um escalation i agree um, escalation happening too quick yes not only too quick but ruining the third book yeah right yeah um there was i, I think we talked about this I, I think the author was called jenny lyons mm -hmm. I, i'm not 100 percent. it was l-y-o-n-s i'm mm -hmm. pretty sure it came out this year and it was talked about as the best fantasy book of the year. Never trust those. But I know, but everybody was saying it. Okay. All the reviews were like best fantasy book in the year. So, oh, Jesus. Do you know what? I do, normally I don't trust them. Yeah. And I'm like, screw it. I'll give it a go. Okay. Um, 100 pages in, their magic system had escalated so much that anybody with a sword or whatever yeah. was obsolete. Yeah, like to the point where it was laughable but it just escalated and escalated 100 pages in I was like oh so this is two magic users going at it because everybody else are ants and I thought it was the war like it's fair play to her and uh, everything should come with a caveat as in I've never read a fantasy book I, I'm sorry I've never written a fantasy book yeah. in my life and that's writing is hard so I it's know. easy to criticize and tear down but I have a nice example for that. Jesus, it really annoyed me. Uh, What's your example? There's a, I think it's a Russian author, Nick Peremov. Yeah. And he got some traction in the Swedish uh, bookstores because yeah. Russian and newly translated and the books are pretty good apparently. Yeah. But I had the same problem. I could not get through the first book because the magic system was so ridiculous and uh, if you had the powers, you could yeah. basically do whatever. You could shape the world however. Right. So why even... Then the book is done. There's so nothing left. Pepe, like Escalation, we can also say magic. Because yeah. that was my next one as well. Yeah, yeah, same there. Like, why even make... Okay, this is what I feel about magic. Yeah. So we moved into pet peeve number three yeah. now, right? Yeah. I... If you make a magic system that is all empowering, mm. then you basically made a superhero story. Yeah. And that else generally 
superhero stories are made for children because it doesn't make sense it's ridiculous and it, it, it doesn't I'm arching an eyebrow right now. Yeah, so I know. I agree, but go on. Yeah. So, it just ruins the whole world building. Yeah. Like, the best magic systems I've ever run into are based around elements. Some kind of logic. Something yeah. that makes physically, uh, physically makes sense. Um, like, if you throw a fireball... And it hits something. That thing will burn yeah. in a sensical way. Yeah. Stuff like that. Like then, then it makes it more believable, even yeah. though it's fantastical. And that's how it uh, can make a fantastical element interesting, mm. right? But if you go fantastical and then super fantastical, yeah. then you ruin the immersion yeah. thing. There have to be results and consequences of magic use. Exactly. Yeah. There's um, Remedy Feist does it well. There's a, a point where. They're in Novindus, uh, which is the hidden continent of uh, Midkemia or whatever. Um, and Nakor, I don't know how well you, versed you are in Raymondy Faust. Uh, Nakor is this like, little magician who says there is no magic. Yep. There's just things and you don't know how to do it yet, but you could. Anybody could do it. But he's, uh, he's, somebody asks him, why don't you just attack that magician? And he goes, well, you know, I attack that magician, another magician attacks me. Then a magician from our side attacks him, and it goes on and on and on. Mm. He said, and I, I feel like that's a that's a good parallel. It's like they cancel each other out. Yeah. So there's a rationale behind it. people with swords and shit. Yeah. But if you yeah if you have all powerful, then you just boom. snap your fingers. Yeah. Everybody dead. Done. Yeah. Book over. Boring. Woohoo. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Makes no sense. No magic systems. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's why we both like Grim Dark. Yes, I think that's why Grim Dark does well. Down to earth, gritty, yeah. people in the trenches. Yeah, makes more sense. If and you have a magic, magic. system, yeah, and if you can still have a magic yeah. system, but it's costly. Yeah, or it's uh, affects yeah. too many people. Yeah. sort of this uh, knock on effects on your own yeah. people, stuff like that. It's easier just to do things with your hand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. there's less cost. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good magic system. Yeah. And then it makes I, for all its like I don't like I, uh, I say I don't like it. Splendor of Sacrilege. I'm not a fan of Tolkien and Lord yeah. of the Rings. I, I just it's too I, lofty. Too yeah, yeah. And I'm not a fan, but the magic system in that is good hmm? in the sense that it's always there, and you're always like, geez, oh, it's powerful. Like, yeah, but they never use powerful. it. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the good thing. Costs and yeah. the, you know. Or it's in the past, deep path. Yeah, that, that's that's a good trope of uh, fantasy, which is oh, there was a lot of magic mm. a millennia ago, but it destroyed the world. Exactly. So you know? now it's like banned or yeah. yeah. You know? that's nice. And also, I like when magic is used cleverly. Yeah. Not. Um, so, for instance, uh, the cantrip system in D and D. Okay. It's nice. Yeah. Because if you use that smart, you don't need any other spells. Yeah. But it's really hard to figure out yeah. how to use it smart, right? So you can get spider webs on your fingers. Yeah. And then you can climb the walls. And all of a sudden you have an amazing power. Yeah. But it's just a cantrip. Sounds like superheroes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brent Weeks does good magic systems. And uh, yeah, but Prism it... of Light or whatever series. Yeah. It's all light based. You know? And what prisms you can see, it's, it's very good. I would like to see it as a TV show. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, that'd be good. I always think, though, I always think of... Uh, oh, what's the actor's name? Uh, he did Dracula with Keanu Reeves. I don't know. Anyway, he was Dra he's a famous character actor. Uh, I can't really remember the his name. Malkovich? No? No, no, no. Uh, it begins with O. I don't know. Anyway, very famous yeah. uh, British character actor. He plays Dracula... Alongside Keanu Reeves' really terrible performance, <laughs> there's a scene where yeah, you cannot knock on Keanu Reeves. He's famous right now, and yeah, everybody Jesus likes him. Christ. Dracula is fucking awful. <laughs> but there's a scene where um, he's playing Dracula. Yeah. He's in a top hat, and he has blue um, framed uh, sunglasses. Yeah, yeah, but like the really cool ones. Yeah. And whenever I think of Prism of Light, I'm like, that's that's how they would look. Oh yeah, it's, sure. it's pretty sweet. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, um, any uh, pet peeve. Okay. Uh, this this is something that's intrinsic to why I went back and read KJ Parker. Okay. Serialization. Yeah. It uh, initially I wasn't that I was like I, I can understand what to do it. You know it's it's 
easier money, it's a bit easier to write. He recently released a book called uh, 16 Ways to Found a Walled City. Hmm. Um, I love the book. I it's, love the title. That made, I right. like, When I saw the title, <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to read this. You, you should. It's very much his book. Okay. In the sense that it's... Uh, uh, do you know what? The, the main protagonist is a little bit more relatable. Okay. Um, sure. But it's an anti-hero, nobody a bridge builder mm. who defends a walled city. Okay. But it's a part of a series. Yeah. And at no point during the, the advertising for this or whatever, it, it all read like it was a standalone book. Yeah. That's like, what I thought. Yeah. You do. Um, only until you get to the last two pages or the last chapter and you're like, mm. well, this can't end now. Mm-hmm. I am confused. And then you realize, no, it's a serialization. So, was this as prevalent before internet? Of course not. No. Of course not. No. So this is just a side effect until we balance everything out. No. Before the internet, you had short stories. I've never read a short story ever. Really? Yeah. Like I, I don't like the format. You haven't like an author you like. You haven't yeah, tried have. to read everything so, you've read. No. So, uh, unless it's a book. What about anthologies? I don't like them either. So I like some stories in anthologies, but there's too many bad ones, so I'm like, yeah. yeah. Then you just go to the authors you like. No, because if I start the book, world. I want to read all of it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, and uh, I tried a couple of anthologies. There's one I really want to try that's... Um, uh, there's a series now out with like... Um, something women and something dragons and something else, and it's... And it's seems like a good they picked the best of the litter basically okay and then made a, a thick book of those and those i've been thinking about reading but other than that i don't read those george r martin does good anthologies okay with uh, authors and they're like good good you know good length mm. anyway serialization it, it annoys me um, yeah, of course but it's releasing a check at least in a chapter or two at a time. Yeah. I, I, I can almost see... But it's basically Amazon and Kindle problem created. Yeah. yeah. But without those monetization issues... Yeah. You would not have read those books at all. We, yeah, I would have read those. How would you have found them? What are you talking So, the books isn't, isn't some of those books only famous because they got released like that? And no. made traction? No. I, it, it's generally... Um, you don't really find it with new authors. They because there's, a there's a couple of new authors who had no traction, yeah. released it on Amazon and Kindle platform, yeah. and then got traction, and then got published. I'm pretty sure they released books, like full books, and they just had other books ready to go. I, don't know, maybe. I, I think it's it's more established authors are starting to do this, where they release okay. so a it's book a, a couple of chapters at a time. So which, it's basically infected the normal book releases? <laughs> a little bit. A little okay. bit. Like, it just annoyed me with this one book. Yeah. 16 ways to defend a wall so how many books is it going to be I don't know because they don't say so I'm not going to read it until yeah. it's all out then don't like, I, I genuinely wouldn't because it's not it's not even a finished book That, that that's my point yeah. like release uh, like a serialization which is three books in a series yeah. it's a trilogy yeah. each book is standalone almost yeah generally like you know there's a beginning middle end yeah but the overriding arc isn't done. Exactly. That's a trilogy. Yeah. That's, that's fine. But it feels like it's in the middle yeah. of... 16 ways to defend the walled city. It's like one third. Uh, even if it was a trilogy, yeah. it doesn't end like a traditional first book of a trilogy okay. would end. In that... You know what I mean? It, you sort of just run into a brick wall. Yeah. You're reading, you're reading, you're like, oh, it's, I'm assuming it's if that's the case, yeah. then the second book should be out in like two months. Maybe. Maybe. Not like Maybe. three years. Like I sometimes. haven't heard of it. I yeah, haven't okay. heard of it. Okay. Well, that's that's a good segue into my last uh, pet peeve, mm-hmm. which is books taking so long to come out. Yeah, of course. But at the same time, are we the ones to complain? We're just lazily we reading and, ah, oh, I want the new book. Give me the next book. It's like watching a TV show and being annoyed yeah. at the next week. It's the next show. Right. Are, are authors obliged to release a book uh, quicker? Of course, of course. They're our slaves. Yeah. Of course they're not. Of course they're not. They're not obliged to do anything. Yeah. They release what they release when they release it. Yeah. I'm saying it's a pet peeve of mine. Um, y- you can obviously point to George R. R. Martin, where mm. who? It's been what, 15. No, it can't be that long. I got a long time since Winds of Winter. Like a long time. Yeah. Um, and you're waiting a long time, and he's releasing other books, and you're asking yourself, he's got an obligation to me. 
No, to me doesn't. personally, and I know he doesn't. That's just because you put time into it. Yeah. You feel like it, you have yeah. an obligation, but he doesn't. Of course he doesn't. You know, release mm. a book whenever you want. You know, that's up to you, but it's a pet peeve. Yeah. You look at uh, Patrick Rothfuss. Yeah, oh, I, yeah. Yeah, and he has a massive online presence with his world building and his... So yeah, Patrick Rothfuss. Um, you see, he's got a lot of other things going on, you know, like his world building thing. He says, great online presence. Um, and you're just like, just, just release another book. You know, stop doing all that. Release another book. And I, I know he has no obligation. And I know none of them do. Like, you release a book when you release a book. If you never release another book, that's on you. You know, I'm sure maybe you've got four advances and whatever, and you legally have to. But, good God, I just release another book. And it's pet peeve. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. It's a personal thing. Of course. I totally understand. Especially when it comes to rest for stuff like but yeah. at this point, I almost want the next book to fail hard <laughs> because it's gone too far. I'm like, yeah. nope. He's too good. It, it, it's not going to fail. It's, it's going to be well, amazing. Well, the 2.5 book was not good. It was all right. No. The Slow Regard of Silent Things or whatever yeah, it's called. Or the Silent Regard of Slow I Things. No idea. Um, it was nice. No. But that, that was so written annoying. to be for a younger audience. Yes. And it, it was nice. It was annoying. Yeah, it was annoying because you just want uh, a real of stone or whatever it is. Yeah. Anyway, any other pet peeves? I, there's hundreds. Yeah, there's hundreds. There's I have others end. written down, but it, I like fantasy and I want to end liking fantasy. Do you like fantasy? It doesn't sound like I it. I know, right? Yeah. Uh, nah, I'm still going to read fantasy until the yeah. day I die. Sure. It's not going to be a thing I give up on. Uh, but yeah. I've started to, as I grow older, like mm. coming of age stories. Yeah. And that goes back into the power thing. Mm -hmm. And not only that, with the fantastical creatures, sometimes yeah. they come in way over the top and then just fizzle out into nothing. Yeah. So in the beginning, there's like this overbearing presence and then two books in they're like oh yeah this is the guy I give cookies to oh yeah it might have been a big, dra big bad dragon before but now nah, nah, it's fine yeah, yeah. you know so like inconsistencies but that's generally for any author yeah. any, any genre right yeah that's true um, but yeah so we both love fantasy we'll continue reading um, we? yeah I think so um, what if you go blind uh, I don't know uh, audiobooks braille Okay, maybe. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. So <laughs> there's always avenues there. Um, Leif, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you to everybody who's listened. Uh, from me, Ronan V, I'd like to say goodbye. From Leif, before you leave, a uh, quick question. Um, any update on the next Scott Lynch book? Yeah, I heard that for sure, 100%, is going to come out 2025. I believe it when I say it. All right. Anyway, Leif, uh, I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, from me, Ronan V, it's goodbye. And from Leif, Jor. Bye. See you next time. Oh, and before I forget, please remember that you can find us on Twitter at TangentalD, um, Facebook, Tangential Diatribe, YouTube, uh, Tangential Diatribe. And if you'd like to reach us, please send us a message on tangentaldiatribe at gmail.com.